Good morning, LCC kids. Happy Sunday. I hope your week is going well. Let's go ahead and jump into our game for today. It's called Poser, and you're going to have to bust a dance move. So go ahead and stand up if you're sitting down right now. And, and we're going we're gonna to show you a series of positions and poses that you could do. Maybe you can pull them out next time you're dancing. But you're going to have to line up and match whatever's on the screen. So let's just take a moment and look through some of these together. So our first one is called Buff City. So you got to kind of lift your arms over your head like that and show your, your guns. Uh, then there's the Tarzan calling out like that uh, as you're uh, grabbing the vine. Then you got jazz hands, extra points if you can kind of twiddle your fingers while you're doing that. Uh, the ninja pose, everybody's going to remember that one, I'm sure. There's the spy, so kind of have to hold up your hands all secretively like that. We don't condone weapon violence. There's the super jazz hands, full on out there, one arm up high, one arm down. And then the mind reader, put your index finger, your pointer finger, point it to your brain. And uh, then last one is, is the duke ready to draw like in an old western. Now you might not remember all those, but that's okay because we're going to put them all up on the screen right here. And just pick one. Pick one right now and on the count of 3 you're going to you're going to bust a move and then we're going to reveal which one you should have been doing right now and if you line up with what's on the screen, you get a point. Uh, so go ahead and pick a move and 1 2 3 bust a move. And if you were doing the spy, you'd get a point. All right, let's go back and see all our options again. Go ahead and think about what you want to do next. And one, two, three, bust a move. And if you were quick on the draw, matched up with the Duke, then you, you got a point there. Let's do a couple more. All right, what are you going to do next? Who knows, maybe something we've already done is going to be pulled out. Maybe the next option will be entirely new. What do you think? Make a choice. All right. One, two, three. Bust a move. The ninja. Awesome. All right. Final, final option here. What do you think? By the way, the one and only Mr. Jordan Bellamy is choosing what move is going to be next. And so you got to get inside of his mind right now. What do you think he's going to do? You know, Mr. Jordan. All right, pick your move and go ahead. One, two, three, bust a move. Super jazz hands. If you were doing that just now, you got yourself a point. And we'll pull out a few more of those in a little bit. But we're going to jump into today's story. We've been following along. God had rescued his people Israel out of being slaves in Egypt. He led them out with miracles. He's been taking care of them in a wilderness and they've wandered around in that wilderness for 40 years. And now the time has come for them to finally go into the land of promise. That land that 400 years ago, God had told Abraham, hey, I've got this land for you. You're going to be a great people here, and, and you're going to be a blessing to the nations. You know, sometimes we have a hard time waiting a couple of minutes for something. What if it took 400 years? And yet God is always right on time in his plans. And so now they're about to go into, start starting to to. Uh, enter this land, and yet there are other people that are living there who have taken over. Uh, these cities belong to the people of God, and yet they're going to have to do battle and fight off enemies along the way. And they're going to get attacked as they're engaging this. And you might remember uh, from a couple of weeks ago that 12 spies were sent in to, to check out the land, to see what's the land like? What, you know, is it fruitful? Is it a place where we, we can dwell and build cities? What are the people like? Are they, are, are they going to be quite a foe that we're going to have to face? And 10 of the spies came back saying, yeah, you know, the land is pretty sweet. It is flowing with milk and honey, and it is pretty awesome. And I guess God's going to be good for us. But there's giants in the land, and we can never win against these people. And yet only two of the spies 
One guy named Joshua and another guy named Caleb had the faith to say, God's with us. Sure, it's going to be hard, and sure, there are big people, but God is bigger. Well, here now, Caleb has become the, 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 actually not Caleb, Joshua has become the leader of God's people. Moses has died, and now it's time for Joshua to lead the people into the promised land. And he sends just two spies. I don't know, maybe he learned his lesson from last time. It was only two spies who did what they were supposed to do. So two spies go into this city of Jericho to check it out and to try to come up with a plan. How can we meet these people in battle? And, and today's lesson is, is titled Rahab's Help. Rahab's Help. And they're going to encounter this woman, Rahab. And, and she is an unlikely helper. This story, it's filled with surprises. She's not the person you would expect who'd be the one to help. She's an unlikely helper, right? That's what unlikely means. It's not what you would expect. It's a surprise. If you found out that, hey, last week somebody ran a marathon, it's unlikely that that person would be me. <laughs> but if you heard that somebody just won an ice cream eating contest, uh, it's pretty likely that I'd be, I'd be the person involved in that one, right? So she is unlikely. What is it that makes her unlikely to help? Well, she is a foreigner. She's not an Israelite. So she's from the wrong people, so to speak. She's an enemy. She, she lives in the city of Jericho where God's enemies, where the enemies of the people of God that they're going to fight live. And she's also somebody who has this reputation. She's known for being a sinful person. She doesn't have a good reputation in the kind of work that she does. And yet she's the one who meets these two spies, lets them come into her house and, and, and even covers for them so that they're able to escape safely when, when people show up trying to find them because they, they, get, they get wind. Some of the, some of the uh, warriors of the city find out that there are these spies who've come to check out our city and try to find out how they can fight us. And she helps them escape. Why does she do all that? Well, she says this, that she's heard about the reputation. You know, she's somebody, she's a woman that has a bad reputation. She's heard of the reputation of God, of Yahweh, of, of the God who has led out his people with a strong arm and divided waters and conquered kingdoms and, and cast Pharaoh and his army into the sea. And she's believed the reputation of this God who is powerful and who's also for his people and fights for them and always takes care of them. And she believes that. She, she has faith that that is who God is. And she wants that God to be her God. And she wants to be on God's side. And she, she says, I'll help you. Even though it, it's risky business for me, even though it might put me in danger, I'm going to help the people of God because I want to be on the side of God. And notice what you find about her. It's not who you are, but whom you believe that matters. It's not ultimately, are you a really good person? Are you the right kind of person? Are you the kind of person that people respect? But where is your trust? And even as unlikely of a person as she is, she's the one who steps in and helps God's people when they need it. And we're going to find out some other unlikely things in this story in just a moment. But let's see if you can figure out what pose is likely to be chosen next. Let's go back to our game poser, and we're going to put all those options up on the screen here. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a twist. Which one do you think is unlikely to be chosen. So if you do the same pose as one of these characters, you're going to have to sit down. You're going to be out of the game. Um, so let's see. You don't have to pick what's going to be on the screen. You just have to pick what's not likely to be chosen uh, for one of these poses. So go ahead. Think about that for a second. Try to get into the brain of Mr. Jordan. I don't know, maybe you want to do the mind reader pose to help you do that. But go ahead. One, two, three, strike a pose. All right. 
if you're doing the Tarzan, you, you're out. You got to sit down. Sorry, you, you didn't pick the unlikely one. All right, go ahead and think about another option for you. And one, two, three, Shrek a pose. If you're Buff City, what you thinking? You got to sit down now. Put the gun show away, okay? All right, let's do one more and see if you can survive. I don't know if you need a little help, but let's do it. One, two, three, Shrek a pose. The mind reader. Good choice, Mr. Jordan. But if you were trying to read Mr. Jordan's mind by doing the mind reader, you got to sit down and you're out. If you're still standing, congratulations. You've done a good job. All right, we've talked about this unlikely helper. Now let's think about the unlikely salvation that shows up in the story. There's several ways that there's an unlikely salvation. One is that Rahab ends up getting saved because she helps the people of God, because she places her trust in God, she is protected and rescued from destruction. Here, here's what the, the spies tell her. Put outside of your window this long scarlet cord. Scarlet is like a fancy word for, for red, right? Uh, put this scarlet cord outside of your window and hang it down. And when we come in and when we attack the city, we will make sure that we will spare the life of you and your family. And you can become one of us after that. And so Rahab gets saved. She gets rescued. But it's really interesting to think about that scarlet cord because it's showing a picture of a greater kind of salvation that's also unlikely and yet surprising and God works it. Do you know, do you know what happens with Rahab? Do you know the rest of her story? She becomes like the great, 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 great grandmother to King David, who would one day step in and be a hero who would rescue his people and, and kill a giant. You know, they were all worried about the giants in the land. David's going to come around and actually kill a giant and rescue the people. But Rahab is not only that. She's the great, 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 and you can keep going on, grandmother of Jesus Christ. And there are only a few women who are mentioned in the story of Jesus about those who were his ancestors, those who came before him. And Rahab is one of them because of her faith and trust, even though she was an outsider, an unlikely person, an enemy, someone who had a bad reputation for being a sinner. Through her, God is going to send a savior. And, and through the scarlet blood, the, the, the blood that was shed by Jesus, you and I, who are also God's enemies, who are also outsiders, who are also those who had a reputation of being sinful, not by who we are, but by where our trust is, would be rescued and would be safe forever with God by trusting in him. Always trust the God who has proven himself to fight for his people and to take care of every need that we have, and ultimately to take care of our greatest needs and paying the price for our sins. Every story, kids, is showing us who he is and telling us his name. And once again, we see Jesus here. Let's find out how we're going to see him next Sunday. Join us again. You know where to do it, and we'll see you then.